basically after the game, he he let loose. And I said this about Graham Potter earlier, like he's being very honest and open about what he thinks about the Federation, the players and the fans. And that's because Tata Martino, let's not confuse anything about it. He's gone after the World Cup. I mean, yeah. he could win the World Cup with Mexico. He's gone. He's not resigning. The man's been beaten into submission. He's defeated. He's in his fuck it stage right now. He's just calling out everybody. And honestly, I think it's needed from Mexico. And one of the things that we can talk about specifically is he was talking about the booing. And he was very upset that the fans were booing the Mexican national team in halftime when the score was nil-nil because he thought that they were playing very well. Um, and, you know, I can read a direct quote here. He's saying what really worries me about the booing is the impact that this could have on the players. It's a real concern. How long will they be able to manage the pressure? You know, the pressure that the Mexican fans place on the team to basically, basically Mexican fans most of the time aren't happy unless they win four nothing against a team. And so it kind of, kind of begs the question about like toxic fan bases in football. And we did a video a long time ago about this. And I mm -hmm. said that Mexico is a toxic fan base. And I think, and you guys, obviously you're not Mexico fans, but I'd like to get your opinion. I think what Tata Martino is saying is brilliant. And I think it needs to be said by the jefe from, from the big boss to say, hey, you guys are putting these unrealistic expectations on my players and it's crushing them. They cannot live up to your expectations and look at the effect it's having on the team mentally, psychologically. I, I think what he said was great. Some people were upset about it. Some people were like, oh, now he's complaining. Like, oh, he's just whining. It's like, no, he's spitting facts. This is facts. They finished second in World Cup qualifiers. And yes, it wasn't particularly sexy football at any point in time. But let's not act like the man's the biggest failure in Mexican football history. And at the same time, they were playing pretty well against Paraguay. I mean, they had like 20 shots. They didn't score, but they were trying and still the negative reception. And this happens in Mexico games all the time. They're playing well, but if they don't get the goal or if the game's tied, it's just boo, 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 boo. And you can see it in the players. They're like terrified to play. And so I don't know if you guys have any have any opinions. Maybe, Connor, you can compare it to a situation in Argentina or maybe at Boca or something like that. But in short, I'm very happy that Tata Martino called out the fans like this because I think it needs to happen. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, I think that it's a... It, it can when, when it comes to a fan base that is so passionate about the sport, you know, everybody watches. Maybe not everybody's an expert. Um, but they all watch, they all have, uh, you know, they're all invested in this. They, they put their heart and soul on this team. Like their entire fucking weekend is dependent on how the fucking team performs. Like it's, it's, it's only logical that, that there's going to be some like negative impact, um, when, you know, the people that you're fucking bleeding, sweating and crying for are fucking booing you and hating you. Like. Of course, there's negative impact from that, and it's bad for the lads. But I think that the fans are misplacing the blame. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not all Tata's fault. It, it it physically cannot be. Like, they have had decent results. Maybe their showings haven't been the best, but the results have been decent. I think that they are they're getting outclassed right now by a a, a truly groundbreaking U.S. men's national team right like it there's a lot of competition right now in the league and the u.s men's national team is kind of um playing a bit more to their potential now and they fucking hate to see that they're like okay so the men's u.s u.s is doing well that means mexico's bad i don't i don't think that's what it means i think that the federation has never been the strongest just like argentina like the infrastructure there is bad. Oh, it's trash. Yeah. It's trash. So that that's not getting the fucking support that he needs. He's not. He he's he flat out not. And if you look through these things, he's like, people who opine don't know me. They don't know who I am as a person. If they knew who I am, this wouldn't be taking place. I think that means like if you saw the work that I'm doing and the shit that I'm putting in here and that the lads are doing, you wouldn't be mad at us. You would not be mad at us. You'd be mad at somebody else. That is his indirect way of saying, look up, look up. This yeah. isn't can, on me. Can I jump in there? Yeah. Jake, when I saw that he said that, I immediately thought, thought of Ralph Ragnick at Man U. Yeah. 
where he was like, there's some big changes behind the scenes. You know, I can't say everything. Let's just say we need a revamp. He and knows like, this fucking yeah. fraud. Like he's trash. And I'm like, he's shining light on the cockroaches. Oh, or yeah. at least he's trying to listen and we're to the crucifying him for it. Exactly. And Tata, just like Ralph, Ralph knew he was done. He said, oh, bro, I got the Austria offer in the mail. I'm leaving. I'm bouncing from this bitch. Let me leave you guys guys with some good graces. Let me give and you that, one piece that, of advice. That, that wanted out, right? He wanted out. He tried out to resign. And, and he tried to resign, and they declined. And they declined. They said no. And they still mad stay. at him. Uh, I, They're like, they wanted, out. He's like, okay. And then the Federation press is like, no. They want a scapegoat right now because they know they would be absolutely fucked. It would be shambolic if he left before the World Cup. It would be 10 times as bad as it is now. It would be yeah. absolutely horrible. Mexico is out in the fucking group. They, they're not getting a single point if Tata leaves. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? At least here. That's happening some regardless. <laughs> no, I mean, they're getting, they getting second. They're getting six points. <laughs> they're, getting, they're getting something now but like if you fucking get the captain out of there if you let him leave then it comes down to the federation and the cockroaches are exposed for who they are and and they really can't have that so they're totally fine with letting him be the fucking scapegoat and martino's like i fucking guess but he's getting this all out now so that in his exit interview or not his exit interview but his next interview he can cite these comments and be mm -hmm. like i talked about it i talked about it here that's how it this works is, out. This is how you know. Guys. Oh That's yeah, how it works out for these guys that try to uh, shine all the lights, all the skeletons in the closet, and, and the cockroaches, as we as uh, we've been referring to. Mm -hmm. And th this is another case of where I think the manager, like you said, Connor, is blamed for everything. And let's let me be very clear: Tata Martino has made some mistakes. Oh yeah, his team oh, yeah. selection at times is god awful. Oh Tactically, yeah. Tactically, he's stubborn as an ox. That being said. You can't say Mexico is where they are because of Tata Martino. But I think that's what the ignorant fan in Mexico City will tell you. And that's why they're, they're chanting Fuera Tata. Why don't you chant at the president every single it, game? It starts with the Federation. It does. You know, as much as we like to poo-poo on Greg, um, <laughs> you know, it, it goes to the U.S. Soccer Federation. Yeah, there's They more are ultimately trash sometimes oh, yeah. with their choices. Agreed. And it's the same thing with the Mexico Federation, you know? You can't have such high expectations for the team and your manager when, you know, historically, there's really nothing to base that off of, I feel like, other than your your CONCACAF runs and maybe your quarterfinal runs in the 80s, 70s, your two quarterfinal runs. Oh, for Mexico? You know? for, for Mexico, yeah. Yeah, both home World Cups. <laughs> yeah, so... You know, it's not like you're a Brazil where you have four or five World Cups and you're like, oh, shit, guys, like we need to be on top all the time. You know? Yeah. But that's the expectation. That is the expectation, which is what I'm trying to draw to is it it doesn't make a lot of sense. Right. Right. It'd be like in Prem terms, it'd be like and it kind of is like Arsenal fans every year. They're like, we should win the league. And it's like, hold on. You're a good team. You got some ballers, but you need a reality check. Oh, yeah. You're not winning the league. You no. should be aiming for top four in a domestic cup. That's what you should be aiming for. And Mexican fans are the exact same because you're right. They act like we have the, the talent pool of Brazil. Meanwhile, we're starting Antuna at right wing, and I want to shoot myself in the face every time I watch the man receive a ball. He's absolutely washed, <laughs> completely finished. And I'm like, if you think we were really as good as Argentina and Brazil, do you think that man would be playing? Do you really think that man would be playing? Do you think mm -hmm. Alvarado would be the starting striker if we were that good? Mm -hmm. Alvarado wouldn't make the bench for the U.S. He would make the bench for Canada. And he's starting for us in a match against Paraguay. It's crazy, dude. The ex that, that's what, it's, it's a toxic yeah. fan base in the sense the expectations are out of control. Now, on the flip yeah. side, they will shower you with more love than any oh, yeah. other fan base will if you are playing what the type of football that they want to see when it's you have a do. fan base that passionate it's only it's only right it's only logical that you're going to get polarizing takes like that and right now they're suffering something really bad hopefully hopefully everybody can get together to support you know that that was saying that you're going to get at any given world cup that mexico's in 40 to 50,000 mexico fans away 
That is massive. That is fucking huge. Yeah. That's insane. It's impressive. It's 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 indicative of one of the most passionate diehard fan bases in world football. And that comes with good and bad. Right now, yeah. they're suffering the worst of the worst. And that's really not good going into a World Cup. Like, the, that team needs all the support it can get. So, yeah, um, especially in the World Cup, like oh, you yeah. said. Like, it, we, we, can't be, we can't be nil-nil or even down a goal against Poland in the first half. And, it's and just you start hearing booze. a fuera tata? Yeah, in, like, like in fucking Qatar, half of world, a <laughs> half way through away. the first game. Like, it's like, oh no, that's oh that's God. gonna be horrible. That's a nightmare. The lads aren't gonna compete after that. It'll break it's, them. It'll it will break them. It will break the entire team, and that's not good. Yeah, you and keep I think, a semblance of a spine through this. Mexico right. has a decent future ahead, but like, you 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 just gotta support the lads. If you're not doing it for that, that do it for the lads. Right. Do it for the boys. It, right. You have to you have to ride for your team. And I feel oh, yeah. like Mexican fans are very quick to jump the boat. They're like, nah, fuck it. Y'all didn't score two in the first half. Y'all are all trash. And it's like, yeah. well, I mean, they're playing well. Just give them some more time. And I think the players have that feel so much pressure to perform that when they have a bad shot or they're one on one with the goalkeeper, I, I truly feel like half the time they're thinking about the crowd. And I think it puts them off. And that's not what you want. You, you want it to feel like a coliseum, like a fortress oh, yeah. whenever Mexico plays. But instead, it's like the crowd is turning on the gladiators every single time. And so, I, I don't know. Um, off with his head. That's what people say. That's what people say. And um, I guess the last thing I want to say about his post-match comments, which I thought, again, kind of echoed Man U. And I think I did compare it to Man U or like the English media. Um, is, you know, he was talking about a lot of the commentators and everybody are like old Mexican coaches and players, and he feels like there's an agenda against him. And again, he's made mistakes. I think he's embellishing the truth, but I think he's still speaking the truth, if that makes any yeah. sense. He's yes. exaggerating, but he's also correct. Like, there are definitely people in Mexico that want this man to fail. They oh, yeah. never wanted him to succeed from the beginning. And I feel like Kind of with Man U, there's sometimes the same thing with managers, man, managerial appointments or whatever. You got Ugh. Gary Neville, like they just and um, there is Keenan, there is always going to be a camp, and like we were talking about before, for every team ever assembled, there is always going to be a group of naysayers saying, "Well, that's not how I would do it." Oh yeah, you know, or like, "Well, they could have done better." I yes, but there's. Better. But there's not always a group of well-respected national pundits who do that. Like, Brighton have a group of detract. I'm sure there's a one fucking pub in the coast of England where they're like, fuck Graham Potter, he's trash, worst manager. That's, that's six guys, six drunks in a pub. It's there's, different there's, when the there's Sky people Sports that guys. Aren't on, that don't have a platform or a stage exactly. to speak out about this stuff. Yeah, yeah Very no, few I heard teams you. deal with that pressure. Like, you could say Alexi Lalas is sort of that for the U.S. Um, Taylor Twelman, I wouldn't say he's a hater, but, you know, he can definitely stir up dissent. But in Mexico, it's like... Every motherfucker hates this guy. He doesn't oh, yeah. have one ally in the media. And I feel like Ralph was maybe kind of like that at one point uh, for Man U. And it's just like, these are problems that only a few nations and clubs have to deal with. Like, just the big boys. You know, like, Southampton doesn't have to deal with this problem, for better or for worse. Even yeah. Spurs, they have, like, one, one guy in the broadcasting team. So They can just focus on playing, focus on ball. Yeah, yeah, I think I think the coverage around Mexico is very emotional, much like Man U, and I think it's bad. Yep. It, it it borderlines, it, it strays away from actual news and coverage. Yeah, and more just more just like like uh, you guys were saying, like, well, this is what I would do if I was a Mexican. It's like, but you're not, bitch. You That's were the manager. Me. You lost five of your first twelve games. We gave you the boot. Why are you talking? Why yeah. is anybody asking your opinion? You were the worst manager we ever had. <laughs> Shut your ass up and start talking about Liga Mekis, all right? Yep. Yeah. Go back to talking about Cruz Azul. Don't, don't tell Tata how to do his job, okay? Because if you were in charge, we, we don't make it to Qatar. 